Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, I've got a couple of indicators here. One is the, this is the monthly chart of silver. And uh, the in, two indicators I've got here are the MACD and the long-term trend line. Now, the MACD, the big thing to note here is that, first of all, that this time below the zero line here, this is going to be a record because we're looking at uh, let's see, where is that? April, maybe May of 2013. So we're talking two, over two, two plus years. The only other comparable period we have here is actually this period. Of course, it doesn't go anywhere near the depth. We're at negative two here, we got like negative 0.2 there. So 10 times the depth of oversold, but also the length of time that it was under the zero line here for this, you can see this is the bottom of that market. Uh, before we got the big rise that was about a year and a half so we're at two records here now the other thing is that you can see it appears to be turning down can we get a crossover to the downside yes that can happen if we did get that that's probably going to coincide with a test of this line this is the long-term trend line for silver and the bull market for silver is actually at 13 bucks that's going to be the long-term price of this bull um, taking out the noise and this spike up to 50 bucks obviously is really big noise but uh, still we're in a bull market from that perspective now if we get across down below this line if we get if we go below 13 bucks an ounce for silver First of all, that's just a paper price, and uh, we can already see premiums are starting to expand. I'm going to show you the junk silver here in a second, but uh, so it's it's kind of ironic that as far as the long-term bull in silver, we need to get across below $13, and if we do get $13 on silver, um, the beginning of the bear is kind of like the beginning of the bull because we're already seeing premiums explode on silver so that's kind of strange to think about now if of course if you're looking at things in short term then yeah we've had a bear market from 50 bucks down to 16 bucks and i don't know you do the math that's a 60 something percent bear market but longer term the market's still in a bull phase now let's go look at that junk silver this is at max 90 percent bag you can see First of all, I put quantity in. They only have one. This is the $1,000 face. You can see $14,000. $14,000 is $4.99 over spot. Can you believe that? Spot here is listed as $14.61, and we've got $4.99 over spot on just one bag. Now, what could possibly cause that? How, how could you have that in a, a bear market? Now, we know, well, there's some silver here and there's some silver there. Well, this is very important silver for me because this is junk silver. Um, you can go to compare silver prices. There are some that are lower, but still we're talking about 19 bucks is the lowest price you can get on junk silver right now, 19 bucks an ounce. So that's an indicator that things are really, that they're pushing things, that they really can't go much further than here. So I wanted to co cover a few things here on just how dishonest the media is in the way they report things. And, uh, you know, we all know this, but uh, we have to be reminded from time to time. So I want to start off with, you know, I talked about the Chinese stock market and it's all over in the mainstream media. It's not just in the mainstream media. It's also in the alternative media. Zero Hedge just absolutely pounds the table about the Chinese stock market. Of course, I said for a while, and Peter Schiff agrees with me, that uh, that the Chinese, the news on the Chinese stock market is overdone. Yes, it was due for a correction, uh, but as far as long-term health, uh, I expect it to go up. The, I expect the Chinese economy to continue to grow. And ultimately, I think the Chinese stock market is just catching up with the growth. Now, this is a cross of the Chinese stock market and Apple computer. Now I want you to guess which one is which. Well, I think you know. The blue line is the Chinese stock market. And you can see that back in 2008, this is actually September of 2007, October 2007, the Chinese stock market topped and it fell. 
and uh, the price of Apple computer topped and fell a little bit and then it began this big rally. Now we can see this is a 10 year chart. So 10 years ago, uh, if we would have invested in Chinese stocks, we would have had a little bit better than a double, up 225%. Whereas Apple stock is currently up 1300%. You can see it hit as high as 1500%. So a doubling in Chinese stocks and a 13 fold move in Apple computer. And, and you can see it looks like Apple computer is starting to crash here. We don't know, it's done it before, but isn't it interesting to have a, a biased media the way we do, where you never hear about how overvalued Apple computer is, but you always hear how overvalued Chinese stocks are. We don't hear about a crash in Apple computer, but we hear about a crash in the Chinese stock market. That's because we have a media that's completely controlled. They're totally dishonest and they have an agenda and they have a spin and their spin always goes with their agenda. Now, let's take a look here. I wanted to show you, this is another example of bias in the media, how dishonest they are. Now we know that this Silver Eagle story was a big story. They started selling them again on July 27th. Chris Duane has covered that uh, July, June and July added together is a record in history for the Silver Eagle. I just heard uh, Peter Schiff, I think, say that uh, we're ahead by a, a million or two of last year's record breaking year of Silver Eagle sales. So they haven't slowed down a bit, but this is news articles off of Google's website arranged or sorted by date. And you can see that I have an exact phrase search there, Silver Eagles. Now, what I want you to note here, it's interesting that this one just came up 10 hours ago uh, from thestreet.com. There's actually two from thestreet.com. And uh, if you're not familiar with that, I, I would call thestreet.com kind of an uh, middle between alternative. Uh, it's not mainstream as far as you know CNN, MSNBC. It's just second tier mainstream media. There's two articles from the street.com in this list you can see. And one is a gold bashing article and this one's kind of neutral. Uh, that's five things that will shake up the precious metals. They say a little bit of truth in there. But let's look at the rest of the sites that cover this story. So we know that Silver Eagles went into rationing. That's the correct term, not allocation. Uh, they're still in allocation, by the way, but they stopped selling them. So uh, they, they sold out. Now, you would think that that would be big news in the financial media. At least it should be. Well, let's look at the coverage here. You can see going by date, we start here at uh, the today, and then we go to the 3rd of August. And let's look at the sites here. We've got Coin News, Gold Seek, Coin World, Gold Seek, Silver Seek, uh, that's just a coin show, Market Oracle, uh, Gold Seek, Gold Seek. Now we don't see any articles about the Silver uh, Eagles um, being sold out. Let's keep going. We're back to the 27th. This is when they started selling them again. Coinnews.net, Goldseek, Coinworld, Newsmax, Goldseek, Goldseek. There's the other street.com. That's kind of a negative article. Here's Silverseek. More Silverseek, Silver Coins Today blog, Coinnews.net, Goldseek, uh, Men's News Daily. And that actually covered that mint to stop producing Silver Eagles. Banksters unleash a golden Sunday evening drive-by shooting. I don't know what Men's News Daily is. It looks like an alternative site. Uh, U.S. Mint to resume sales. And you can see we're back to here. Conspiracy or Madness, Silver Seat covering that. So do you see any mainstream financial news source covering the story? Nope. You don't even have a story at all. Not... I mean, much less a story about the mint selling out of Silver Eagles, but you don't even have one about them resuming. You don't have any articles about Silver Eagles at all in the mainstream media, at least not that Google can find. 
So that, to me, is, a, is just a dead giveaway. The, the mainstream media now is, an, is in a full-on silence mode. Now, in the past, if you remember back when Don Harold came on Yahoo near the top of Silver right before they did that coordinated smash with Obama's fake birth certificate and the fake capture of bin Laden, all that stuff, five raises of the margin requirements in the middle of the night and a crash from Asia, all that was pre, pre, uh, presaged by uh, bashers in the media talking about silver's going to crash, silver's too high, all the silver stories. Now there's complete silence in the mainstream media about silver. I think they know they don't even want to mention it because there are already enormous numbers of people piling in. So let me jump over here and show you another story that just goes to show you how biased the media is. This is on Puerto Rico who defaulted yesterday or Saturday or whichever date you want to pick. This is by Ambrose Evans Pritchard, and everybody thinks he's uh, you know, a good uh, alternative guy. No, he's not. He's an inside, insider, mainstream media, and of course, this has the spin here. So let's read the story. This is, this is what the sheep will consume. This is when the sheep will find out, and this is, this is the spin that they want the sheep will to have when they look at the story here. So they ran out of money on, of money on Monday. They have $72 billion. The Commonwealth is now in legal limbo, facing a well-organized pack of hedge funds that scooped up the debt at distressed levels and appears determined to extract maximum value in the courts, even if this means shutting down part of the island's education, and so, education system and social services. So there you have it there. That is mainstream media spin that is you see it this is ahead of time they're showing you how they're going to spin the story uh, you can see by the way they use the term a pack of hedge funds that scooped up the debt at distressed levels and uh, they want to shut down education and social services so that there's the spin now Let's go and look through the comments here. I put the word hedge in here. You can see, uh, here's a quote. If the hedge funds press for their pound of flesh, they could drive the economy into the ground. The more the economy tanks, the less they tax and collect, the more they have to tighten. It's crazy. And a group of 34 hedge funds led by fur tree partners among them has recruited a team of former IMF officials to push their case that Puerto Rico is able to pay its debts and rein in its public spending. And the final conclusion for the world, Puerto Rico is becoming a test case of whether hedge funds and financial creditors can legitimately dictate terms to a sub-sovereign, to sub-sovereign states or whether there's a greater social interest in limiting their legal powers. And then, you know, you can uh, go to the comments here. So here's your typical uh, brainwashed mainstream media moron, this Sophocles. Take the power to dictate to countries away from the hedge funds and financial institutions. It's wrong for them to dictate to any country. So this is what they want you to think. This is how they spin it. Now, what's the truth? Well, the truth is, we can see right here, this is a quote from Ray J. De Leon, a 42-year-old lawyer in Puerto Rico, and he told CNN Money, quote, we have a lot of people who are seniors and they depend on their returns from these bonds to live on a month-to-month -month basis. So what are these bonds? Well, these bonds are people's retirement. Now, let me prove this to you. The figure is $72 billion. This is an article called Who Owns Puerto Rico's Debt? Now, you have to dig down in here, and this is where you find another roughly $15 billion is held by hedge funds. Okay, So the hedge funds only hold 20% of this $72 billion debt. 80% of that debt is held in Americans and Puerto Ricans retirement savings. Now, why is this important? Because if the mainstream media reports to you that 
Puerto Rico's default on their debt is your retirement going down the drain, then obviously it doesn't take a rocket scientist to conclude that they're running a gigantic Ponzi scheme and that one chink in the armor, one crack or hole in this boat can sink the whole thing. They don't want people thinking about that. So what do they do? They demonize the hedge funds. They talk about a pack of hedge funds like rabid dogs. It has nothing to do with the profligacy of Puerto Rico's government, which is absolutely absurd. Uh, I've already talked about the facts. We don't even need to talk about it. No one works there anymore. The, the population is fleeing the country. Everyone who does work works for the government. It's, it's absolute insanity. It is a socialist communist hellhole, and that's what the left wing has produced in Puerto Rico. Absolute destruction. The same thing that they produced in Detroit, and they're producing now in Chicago. They eventually will have produced in California. All of these, of course, will collapse. The people will flee. And, of course, the leftists will, will follow them eventually and destroy wherever they go because that's what they do. That's what socialists, Marxists, communists do. They destroy what someone else has built up. And that's what's happened in Puerto Rico. So it is going to go into a death spiral, but the mainstream media wants you to think that it's the vulture hedge funds. It's these rich people exploiting these poor people, and nothing could be further from the truth. So... Back to the chart, this is going to be critical here, whether or not the monthly MACD turns down and crosses over, whether or not we get a test of $13, that's the long-term bull market trend line, and of course, uh, you want to keep your powder dry if we do get that test, and we'll talk to you next time.